Hello everyone, my name is Ethan, otherwise known as Tegberries, and today, today is the day, the day that we'll live on for the rest of time, the day I reviewed Halo Infinite's campaign. Uh, today I will be going over the game, some spoilers later on, and giving my thoughts on how it was, and also why I really, really like it. But, without further ado, let's get started. Yeah, so, do you, do any of you guys actually, you know, remember that guy, Frank, from, like, Halo Combat Evolved? No? Well, that's because he, he never existed. With spoiler alert, Frank still doesn't exist in Halo Infinite. Uh, I, I did this as a bit, because people always like, get pissed off when I spoil Halo Infinite, even though I don't spoil Halo Infinite. The gameplay of Halo Infinite is honestly amazing. I was kind of worried leading up to Infinite's release because 343 kept repeating that the game would not be open world and that it would just be semi-open world. I worried that their lack of commitment would have consequences on the level design and exploration, but sure enough, they lied, but in the good way. The game is fully open world, with plenty of fun and amazing side content to do throughout the open world, not to mention just how beautiful the open world is. I played Halo Infinite on an Xbox One S, and it ra still ran at a fairly consistent 30 to 40 frames per second. As great as the story levels are, some of the better moments for me are when I'm just driving between points of interest in a warthog. Jackals and brutes howling in the distance as I drive on a dirt road, looking out at the abyss of space and the stars above me. It's an indescribable beauty when playing it that just doesn't transfer to video very well. The enemies are a blast to fight, and their AIs are actually intelligent, and the way they interact with each other is actually pretty interesting. The boss fights are actually challenging, and I love seeing these unique characters out in the open world hunting chief down. The combat loop actually feels like great here as an open world game, less so as a Halo game. Halo Infinite isn't the biggest open world game, but it sure is the prettiest. I personally like open world games a lot because I just like exploring them, and Halo Infinite is the best open world game I have played. Its combat happens just frequent enough in the open world to the point where things don't get boring, but you also don't have to be fighting en enemies every 5 minutes if you don't want to. However, it might not feel as fluid as the more linear Halo games, which is because in Halo Infinite, all of the encounters are designed to be randomized, whereas in the past Halo games, they were constructed to be fairly even and fair fights for the Master Chief to go up against. I think the randomization of the enemy encounters can lead to more variety in overall combat. Overall, I think that it isn't the worst Halo gameplay, but it certainly isn't as refined as Reach or even ODST. So the guns and vehicles work a bit differently in campaign than they do in multiplayer. For example, in multiplayer the vehicles such as the Banshee and the Warthog felt like they were way too fast for some of the maps. But in the campaign, the open world is so massive that it makes sense why the Warthog is so fast because if you took its speed from Halo 3 and tried to drive around in Halo Infinite, it would take you hours just to get to a different island. The vehicles feel much more refined in the campaign than they do in the multiplayer, and the unique vehicles you can find on the map are super fun to drive around. The guns are just as good as they are in multiplayer, but there's a couple of fun additions to campaign, such as a scrap cannon, a full auto explosive turret that's super fun to shoot, you can also find unique weapons used by different Spartan hunters, which all have their own gimmick to them that sets them apart from other base weapons. The ability to call in weapons and vehicles at any time in the open world is certainly appreciated, and I don't have to constantly worry about running out of ammo like in the past Halo games. My only problem with the vehicles is that they just don't have enough health. What's with the Scorpion in particular being made out of paper mache and duct tape? Another problem I have with vehicles is that marines and passenger seats just don't seem to shoot their weapons that often. Other than those issues, I do think the gunplay is solid and the vehicles are almost perfect.
The music in Halo Infinite is the best music in the franchise since ODST and Reach. I mean, Halo Wars 2 was great, but by the rings, Halo Infinite's soundtrack is amazing. Gareth Coker, who made the Ark Survival Evolved soundtrack, is back for Halo Infinite. And I just loved his work on Genesis Part 2, and he really shows his talent here. Don't know too much about the other two musicians who worked on the game, but I can say that they made some absolutely incredible Halo music, and it is truly iconic. The sounds of the weapons in the game sound amazing, and it seems similar to 2019's Modern Warfare in terms of how beefy the guns sound, but where the audio really hits is the enemies. The grunts, brutes, jackals, elites, hunters, all the enemies have their own unique voices, and I can immediately tell what an enemy is just by listening to it speak. If there's one thing I don't like about the enemy's sound design, it's the phantom sound effect. I don't know what it is about it, it just sounds like screeching metal, and I don't know if I like it or not. No doubt it suits the Banished as a faction, but I don't know if it suits the Phantom. You know, uh, it, the Phantom feels a bit too... It doesn't make sense as to why there would be screeching metal on a flying object. Other than that though, I can tell when there's a ghost patrol approaching in the open world just by listening to the ambience. And that has to be applauded, as well as the music and gun sound design. Okay, from here on out, there will actually be heavy spoilers for the campaign, so if you haven't played it yet, do so now. But for those who have stayed, let's get into the story. The game starts off strong with Master Chief fighting and losing a battle against our boy Atriox. He is thrown out into space and forced to watch as the Banished destroy the Infinity in just four minutes. Six months later, after a pilot by the name of Echo 216 finds the Master Chief in space, together they destroy a Banished ship and then the Master Chief descends onto the damaged Halo ring to gather the weapon, an AI copy of Cortana designed to capture her and delete her after Master Chief collects her. He goes onto the ring's surface and captures a destroyed UNSC frigate as a base of operations on the ring. He then sets out to the destroy the Banished, but something is a bit off with the Banished. Atriox is dead, and a new brute has risen to take his place by the name of Eshirim. Eshirim is an older brute who seems to have lung cancer, but instead of cooking meth, he decides he wants to die taking down the Master Chief, the greatest soldier in the universe. He gathers the Spartan hunters and deploys them to hunt down and kill the Master Chief. Chaos ensues, Chief, Echo 216, and the weapon all go about the ring capturing banished bases and uncovering forerunner mysteries. They eventually encounter the Harbinger, a species that wasn't wiped out by the Halo rings during the forerunner flood war millions of years ago. The Harbinger has allied herself with the banished because they both want to reconstruct the damaged Halo ring. After the chief and the weapon disable the spire which is designed to supply the materials needed to rebuild the damaged ring, Echo 216's Pel Pelican is shot down and we got that whole 8 minute demo from 2019. Chaos ensues, Spartan hunters start hunting down the chief, and Echo 216 tries to find a slip space drive to fly home, only to see all the condors have been stripped. Echo 216 gets a bit sad and we learn the truth about his whole character. He isn't a pilot. He isn't even a part of the UNSC. He is a thief who stole the pelican he was using, and he doesn't want to keep on fighting the war against the banished. He basically just wants to pussy out. Master Chief gives him a whole speech, and suddenly he's back on Chief's side, ready to fly him around the ring wherever he wants. Along the way, we find out a bit more about what happened to the original Cortana, and how Chief doesn't exactly trust the weapon. In Halo 5, Chief still cared about Cortana, even after all the Space Hitler stuff but in Infinite, we really see that Chief devalues the weapon. He almost deletes her twice, and he overall does not trust her. Character drama ensues, eventually leading us to the end of the game, where Echo 216 is captured by a Spartan hunter and elite blade master Jaga or Domni. Yeah, you know, the super cool brute that we saw in the trailers. Uh, he's a really cool character. He's like the anti-arbiter. Um, he's an elite who was formerly a part of the Silent Shadow, which was like the Covenant's version of the Spartan Hunters, before the Banished had the Hand of Aatrox, which is their version, version of the Spartan Hunters. Anyway, Chief storms the Banished main base and confronts Jega Erdomni in an actually pretty cool horror sequence. 
basically you walk into a room and find the Echo 216's little uh, video device that has his family on it. And right as the little girl in the video says, bye bye, that's the moment when Jega Urdomni says, uh, say goodbye. It's, it's really cool. Um, you also have this whole sequence where it's like, you, you have your flashlight on and you have to like kill him in the dark and you have to use your motion, your motion sensor because he's like invisible. It's super cool. Um, anyway, after that you go, you fight Ashram. He's a little bitch boy. You get to kill him in like two seconds. Um, and then, you know, you save your boy Echo 216 and then we actually find out what happened to Atriox and Cortana. Basically, Cortana tried to enforce her will against Atriox and the Banished, and Atriox, being the di big dick mega chad that we know he is, just told her, no. So Cortana blew up his homeworld, and in return, Atriox attacked the Infinity and presumably killed the Master Chief. After Cortana found out that Atriox killed the Chief, she realizes that she did a bit of an oopsie, and in a really bittersweet moment of redemption, she blows up the ring, killing herself and Atriox. Her last wish to the Master Chief being that he and the weapon should grow to trust each other, and that she was sorry for what she did. So anyway, after that bit of sadness, uh, the side content in Halo Infinite ranges from why is this here to actually pretty fun and decent. The Help Marines missions are fun to do and I really love them, but my only problem with them is that it's a mission. I think this could be much better as a randomized open world event. <laughs> the propaganda towers are simply towers. You shoot them, they blow up. Nothing special. But I do love the attention to detail with the grunt voices that supply the uh, propaganda towers. And just because I love the grunt voices so much, I, I, I like blowing them up and just hearing the stupid dialogue. The Ford Operating Bases are a small camp that the player can capture and use as their own base to summon weapons and vehicles as they see fit. Next you have the Banished Strongholds. These are like fobs, but instead of just killing enemies, there's usually some other objective you have to complete in order to finish the Stronghold. Fortunately, you cannot actually capture these, meaning enemies will retake it, meaning you can invade it and have fun however many times you want. Finally, you have the Spartan Hunters, unique enemies that offer you unique weapons for killing. They act like boss fights that you can do in the open world. If Bakadun's dossier is any indication, you just did humanity a big favor. Good work, Chief. Halo Infinite has the strongest cast of characters since the original trilogy. The Master Chief, the Weapon, and the Pilot are all the main characters. I felt like I just had to make a whole section about the characters because these are some of the strongest video game characters I've seen since, like, Fall of Cybertron. Each character has their own character arc, and they all end the story in a very different way than they started it. Master Chief starts the story as the same sad boy soldier that he was in Halo 4 and 5, but as the story progresses and eventually through his relationship with the weapon, he becomes more human. There's this really great scene where the pilot tells Chief that he's a thief and a fraud and that Chief should just leave him there to die. And Chief actually goes on this whole speech, telling him that everyone makes mistakes and it's a part of being human. While definitely cliche, it's incredibly powerful that the Master Chief is the one telling him this. The Chief, the soldier who considered himself a machine in Halo 4, became human again? The pilot goes from being a scared little bitch at the start who is scared of grunts and, like, elites and jackals, as he's a dumbass. But as he goes throughout the campaign with the Chief, he grows a death wish, willing to do pretty much anything for his senpai, the Master Chief. In reality, he is given hope in the hopeless situation through Chief's countless victories and heroism. The weapon starts the story as a curious little child who, as the story progresses, just seems to learn more about the world. She also has this really sweet character arc with Chief, who doesn't quite trust her, almost to the point of deleting her twice. But over time, she forgives him and she learns she's a copy of Cortana and eventually Chief learns to trust her. The characters in Halo Infinite seem to be the heart of the game and it really shows as I love them all equally.
So this is mega spoiler section, because I will be talking about the legendary ending. So, Atriox is back. Turns out he didn't die when the ring blew up, and he is actually alive on the ring, and he seems to be after Mendicant Bias. I don't know why he wouldn't retake control of the Banished after six months of being alive, nor how no Banished just kind of noticed their leader was alive, chilling on the ring. But I can't wait to see more of Atriox in the future. Oh, wait a sec, that's going to be paid DLC, never mind. So, Halo Infinite is by no means a perfect video game, but it's the right game at the right time. Halo Infinite was teased way back in 2018, which is almost four years ago now. Since then, there's been a lot of things that have happened, and I've met a lot of people... Halo Infinite has always been there. A game that looked interesting, and I believed in it. I believed it was going to be good. Halo Infinite came out, and it turned out to be just as good as I had hoped, if not better. And because of that, Halo Infinite has a special place in my heart, or whatever's left of it. Overall, Halo Infinite has had a rough development, and while not perfect, it does fit the term of flawed masterpiece. I am super happy with the state of the Halo Infinite campaign, and overall, the wait for the game has been worth it. Thank you, 343. You didn't just make a good Halo game, you made a damn good video game.